welcome to Some of Your Parts Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Betsy Greenleaf, premier pelvic health expert and women's wellness warrior. Join me as we discuss women's wellness topics and discuss tips and tricks with top elite health experts and where you'll discover that you're greater than the sum of your parts. Today, we're going to be discussing Project Passport with its founder and CEO, Sabria Dobbins. Sabria sees herself as a life discovery expert. Her goal is to help individuals reach their greatest potential and to push them to pursue their goals and aspirations while maintaining a strong mental well-being. Her motto is, do not hold your dreams hostage. She's worked in several fields, including marketing, animal health, research, and home disability support. However, she found herself most comfortable in the world of impactful social entrepreneurship. Join me in welcoming Sabria Dobbins. So I'd like to welcome with me Sabria Dobbins with Project Passport. Thank you so much, Sabria, for being with me today. Thank you so much for having me, Betsy. I'm so excited. So actually, I want to bring up the listeners up to date. So what happened, I had interviewed you a while ago. We were about to release that that. <laughs> interview because you had a wellness retreat company and you had all these wonderful like trips planned. And I was saying you were the first person I thought of when this quarantine hit and every, every, all the travel shut down. I was like, Oh my God, what are you going to do? Yes. So what has happened since the lovely coronavirus came to town. Um, girl, post-nervous breakdown, I tell you. Okay, so at first, I'm not going to lie. I was totally out of whack and out of my element. I was, you know, emotionally distraught, mentally distraught, because we had a retreat coming up to Kenya for this summer. It was actually going to be for July. It was fully booked. It was taking a group of eight wonderful women. And I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do here? Do I need to refund people? Do I need to rebook? Like, where do I go from here? And yeah. so um, at first, I think that I, want, I felt like we were going to almost have to shut down because I'm not going to lie to you. I really didn't know what to do, but I took a hiatus and it was the best decision I could have ever made um, as a business owner. And I mean, I know not every business owner can do that, but I had that ability. So I took a step back for two weeks, did very minimal work, only did stuff that was mandatory to keep the company operations going. And I was able to understand, you know, where I could go from here. So we ended up taking our retreats virtual. So we have some, some things that'll be virtual that'll be offered. We ended up expanding our services to now we help other people improve their virtual events. And we also, you know, we um, pulled, pushed Kenya out to 2021 and I was able to retain most of the travelers. Oh, great. It worked out wonderfully. It worked out perfect. So, you know, things happen for a reason and, it's unfortunate that it changed that way, but now we're, I feel like we're in a really good model that can be sustainable for even the future. You know, they say when life gives you lemons, right? Make lemonades. So that's Talks such a right. great way to kind of pivot and turn and make something out of a bad situation. So what do you do with these, these online, these virtual retreats? How does that work? So you know me, I'm a ball of fire. So yeah. I do not believe in being on webcam, staring at PowerPoints and wanting to literally hang up because I've hung up on meetings that have literally made me stare at PowerPoints. So I ended up taking some of the activities that I plan to do for my in-person retreats and events and brought them online. So whether they're stress management tools that we're working out and I'm giving them a stress management presentation or we're doing information on finding your purpose Everything we do is usually a tangible activity. So they're sitting behind their camera, drawing it, writing it, um, you know, holding their little different sample or diagram up because I want you to be a part of the experience as much as I'm trying to help you experience through the camera. So that's what we've been doing. We've been just taking facilitated interactive activities and taking them behind the camera. So any of my events that people participate in, they'll never feel like they're having death by PowerPoint because that's not how I roll. Yeah, no, I know I've been in those before. <laughs> like poking yourself to stay away. <laughs> I know. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't do it. I couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's great too, because you know, people are paying for these events. They, you know, they don't they want something where they're motivated. You know, they're coming to you to make changes in their lives and you know, to get lectured at that would be completely boring. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you have these things? Are they like are they, how are they set up? 
Yes. So basically we have 75 minute ones that we do that are going to be in a pay as you go model or pay as you can model. And then we have free 30 minute virtual uh, mini retreats where you have opportunity to get a taste without having to commit to anything. So they're kind of our introductory retreats. And we try to base these retreats off of themes that we'll have for our future in-person retreats. So it's a way to right. give you a taste of what you'll be t thinking about and talking about on our in-person retreat in the middle of, you know, let's say Kenya, you know, even though you're not in Kenya, we'll get a taste of what the things you'll be doing in Kenya. So for me, what we do is we do a fun little break icebreaker intro, you know, not the boring icebreakers, but something that's interactive. Maybe one of the things I love to ask people is if your life was a movie right now, what movie would you be? Or if you could paddle the book of your life, what would it be? You know, people love these things. They're like, wait, what? So I'm really kooky like that. I love, you know, getting people's blood pumping and their thoughts pumping. And then we'll move into usually a polling activity or something like that, where they get a chance to use the polling feature on Zoom. And you can actually see where everybody else in the room is mentally and emotionally. So they don't feel like one, you're not alone. Yeah. And then we love to roll into the actual activities. So whether we're doing an activity where I'm teaching them how to scale their individual stressors and then break those down so that they can manage their stress, or whether I'm helping them understand what it takes to find purpose in their lives, we'll do tangible kind of drawable activities. Usually I include a little bit of a breakout group at some point so they get a chance to connect with the other participants. And then, you know, a couple more activities and we wind down and it's totally dynamic. The feedback has been amazing from what we've done. And I'm so grateful to have this talent to be able to bring what I believe in and my passion through the camera, even though we're not in the same room, I want you to feel like I'm right next to you. So that's my goal. You know, and that's something we brought up in our last, um, podcast which now at this point in time we were talking earlier like to release it might be silly because you were talking about all your trips mm -hmm. but what we talked about too in that other um interview was what got you into this in the first place yeah you know it was hard because i had went through my own anxiety and depression depressants you know in my life you know during during college i really struggled i was a perfectionist and it results in me having many panic attacks many nervous breakdowns and it really I think hindered my overall happiness on the outside people saw this girl that had the the grades the relationship the the life that everybody wanted as a college girl but they had no idea the price I was paying mentally and emotionally to have that life so that kind of was the start of my mental kind of health journey I guess you can say and then I started working more in my internships and in my nine to fives, kind of closer to when I was graduating. And I realized that there are so many people who are in these spaces where they have no outlet, no sacred mm. space to, to figure out what they want out of life and to figure out what makes them happy and to really get control and stop living in autopilot. Because we do that. Yeah. So many people live in autopilot. Why would you not want to be present in something so beautiful called your life? Yeah. Why would you want to let other people write your story? Sure. Most of us do that. And I was doing that. I was on autopilot. I was just surviving. And I was living a story that I thought my family would be proud of rather than what I wanted, what made Sabria happy. So I, I created this, this company and, you know, we've made a lot of pivots. And one of the biggest pivots we've made lately is now we're going to be only working with women. I feel like that's my strength. That's my calling. And I feel like I can speak to women in a way that would be, it's going to be different. It's going to be more intimate for them, especially when they do these retreats, they can have that kind of intimate um, sisterhood environment rather than, you know, just being to everyone. Yeah, sure. That's great. That's great. So, and it's, you know, you're all, you're still planning on doing trips once everyone's allowed to yes. go place. <laughs> yes. yes. So what's the advantage of going on a trip someplace? Yes. Yeah, so the advantage of going on a retreat, I would say, is we're not going on these retreats to take a vacation from your life. Everybody wants to get away from their life. And that, that's great. You can physically pull yourself from your life, but your mind is your mind and you're still going to be in that space. Or you're still going to have that in the back of your head, whether you're shoving tacos and tequila over top of it. That's great and all, but it's going to be there. Yeah. So the goal is to not only do enjoyable retreat excursions and things like that, but to travel with a deeper sense of purpose. So you're going there to, you know, improve your stress. You're going there to, you know, help with self-discovery, whatever that retreat theme is, you're going for that reason. So we're going to help you go home saying, wow, I cannot wait to go back and deal with talking to my boss about how I really feel or telling my husband what I really want or telling myself what I really want. You know, we, I want you to go back with those tools 
to take control of your life and to live the joy that we are all entitled to live. So that's what our retreats are about. So when you go, you're going to come back probably more excited to be home than you would ever be coming from a vacation where you're just going to block your life out and then you come back to reality. I think it's great that you're doing the virtual retreats because right now a lot of us are just kind of seeing our four walls and that's it. So, you know, doing the virtual retreats kind of gives you a break from, you know, the stress, the new stressors that we're all dealing with and being stuck in the house and not having an outlet and, and not just that, but you're now connecting with other people, people socially. And, you know, it's funny, like I've done this with my kids, like in the past, I was like, don't, I don't want them using like social media that much. Now that they're stuck home, I'm like, get on social media, get on social media. It's so important to make connections and interact with people. So we need each other as people. We really do. And I like to call it a healthy hiatus. You know, the, the experiences with me, um, you know, it's really a healthy hiatus. It's a, it's taking a step away without just doing the, un- the you know, oh, I'm going to just stare blankly into the abyss. Like, no, you know, with, with, with what we do virtually and physically in person, we want you to be able to come back with a better sense of, of yourself and what you need and want in life. Most people don't even know what they want, first of all. That's kind of where the problem lies. And so we hope to help people, especially women in all of these areas. And I'm just, like I said, the sky's the limit. The world is so vast and so beautiful and there's so much opportunity for every single person we create this mindset of scarcity that drives me nuts that oh sure we have to step on our head on her head to get this and i have to do this to get this there is enough for everybody this back in the day they had barter markets and they had work markets where they were able to so everybody had their own little product and everybody was able to live a sustainable life same thing we can do the same thing it's just we got to change that view of how we see each other as people I think also it's very easy, and as Americans, I especially see this happen all the time, that we fall into that victim mentality, like the woe is me, like there's nothing I can do, when you're completely right. There's so much we can do. You just, you just got to do it. Like, yeah. and I think people get scared. It's easier to stay in that victim mentality. It's easier to be, you know, you know, I've heard some strange things like what's going on now where some people are getting paid more on unemployment than trying to go get a job where like, you know, they, they complain, oh, there's no jobs, but I just saw a statistic out there, especially in New Jersey, that there are so many jobs right now that are looking for people and they can't fill them. And yeah, I mean, they don't, people don't even want to go back to work because they're getting paid more with unemployment, which in my opinion, if you're in that space where you're getting more unemployment, maybe take the time to maybe go back to school. That's something you really wanted to do. Yeah. Because now you're in a place where you're not having to worry about the money so much financially, or maybe that's a time to go ahead and start that business. You may have been thinking about, or do that freelance endeavor, you know, just because it's just like, a, Oh, well, I don't have to work right now. Technically because of unemployment, it will end at some point. So go yeah. ahead and set yourself up. So on the back end, it works out for you. That's, I mean, that's what I tell people be strategic about yourself and your life because at the end of the day, you're the one that has to pay the price for the choices you make. No one else but you. And of course your kids, if you have children, they could be impacted. But at the end of the day, you're driving that car. So if you're going to, if it's going to work out that way, then go ahead and do something productive about it. That's what I say. I can't remember who I was talking to. I was talking to someone recently and they said, you know, what's happening now is just the strangest thing in history. And this is history. We're going to look back on this and be like, oh my God, can you imagine when, when coronavirus came around, we're all quarantined. And she was saying that in the end, she wants to be like, this is what I did with my life during quarantine. She wants to say like, I did this and I came out of it doing that. She's like, I don't want to say that I sat around in my sweatpants and gained, you know, 10 bazillion pounds because all I did was bake and eat bread all day, which I have been doing all those things. (laughs) (laughs) You did that and a little bit of something else too. Not just just one thing. Too much of anything is bad, right? Just a little bit, right? Yeah, I agree. And I think that you know, everybody's in this space where people are like, oh, be productive during the coronavirus. And people are like, oh, you know, take this time to relax. I say, why can't you have a little bit of both? You know, why can't you make this a hybrid experience? There's no need to do nothing totally. There's also no need to do everything and, and overwhelm yourself. You know, one of the things I've been wanting to do is learn Spanish. I'm very almost fluent. I'm not like 
perfect. You know, I need to practice. Yo, yo, necesito, yo necesito practicar mucho, pero um, me encanta español. You know, I love Spanish. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm dreaming about it these days because I, I study it every day. Every day I use my app and I practice it. And that's just my thing that I'm doing for me. You know, it's my kind of special thing that I'll do, do, do during the quarantine in addition to my business that makes me happy. So I'm, I'm, I bought these plants. I'm planting my own herbs, like yeah. cilantro and oregano and stuff. I don't even garden, but I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to grow my own herbs. So I don't have to keep going to the store. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, this is the time to do things that you maybe didn't want, get, a chance, get the time or the chance to do. It's a great opportunity, even if they're small things like learning Spanish, you know? That is awesome. No, I agree with you. I'm trying to think what other things I've been doing. Well, I know that the kids, I, my, my kids are doing the homeschool, so they're done by noon. Like, it makes me wonder, I'm like, how are you guys getting through your work so fast? But I've been saying the same thing to them. Like, all right, let's, there's so many different free courses online. And you were saying, even like with yours, you got these 30 minute, you know, videos that you could watch um, that can help improve you. Go People should be doing this. You know, yeah. use this time. I told the kids, you know, go online. There's so many free resources to, you know, find something you like, find something you're interested. We we set up a painting class in the middle I of the living that. room. I love it. Oh, <laughs> you that's know, because so I was like, okay, you guys have to get some art. Let's, you know, set up some easels and, you know, we're painting a bowl of fruit. <laughs> you know, so, oh my goodness, what kind of like what would you say are your biggest recommendations for people right now as we're, you know, kind of in this area of uncertainty? Yeah. I mean, I think that first we need to learn to roll with the fact that everything's uncertain. I mean, coronavirus is not the first uncertain thing that's yeah. ever heard of our lives. And so I think if we could just learn to roll with uncertainty and that comes in risk taking in your own personal life, I mean, no matter what, we don't know if our life is going to be here tomorrow. We don't know if we're going to wake up or not wake up the next day. So we, we function as if we are entitled, you know, mm. the, the certainty that we're going to live and things are going to be this way. It rarely yeah. ever is. Yeah. So I think that if we can just go ahead and accept the fact that uncertainty is part of the journey we call life, it will be a lot easier for us to stomach things like coronavirus because sure. we know that those things just happen. Now, I think during this, you know, virus, this is a great time for you to spend time with you. America does a lot of this phone, TV running, music going on. You got, um, the, the, you, want, you, you know, you're folding clothes. You're doing 50 billion things at once, and you never really have time to be with yourself. Yeah. I bet you many people don't even know who they are. They don't even know what's important to them. They don't even know what they want. They don't know what makes them happy because they, they keep themselves so busy with the, the, the constant lull of life and the blur of sounds that they don't really spend time with themselves. So maybe savor in that silence that you get a little more often, just a little bit longer. If you get a little extra five minutes of silence, don't try to cover it up with scrolling on Facebook. Maybe yeah. spend some time just thinking to myself, you know, what am, what, what am I wanting right now? What do I need right now? You know, how am I feeling right now? Give, if you start to learn yourself intimately in that way, you will live more of a life that's congruent to what you want because you know what you want, you know who you are, you know what's important to you. But most people, they can't ever get there because they're not, it's a blur. They don't know what is going on. So that's, those are two things I say, you know, roll with the uncertainty and spend time with yourself. I, I think that's great with the spending time with yourself because you're right. Like prior to this, everything was go, go, go. And I think sometimes people just don't know how to deal with the stillness. And they're like, oh, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I've, <laughs> I, I will admit I did go on TikTok, you know, and one, <laughs> of, one, of the, one of the things on TikTok is that song, like I'm bored in the house. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard it. It's like, I'm bored, bored in the house, house bored in the, in the house, bored, I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I go, well, there's no reason to be bored. Like just, this is a time where you can be creative. Like you can not only just find yourself, but you can give birth to creativity. It's like sit and spend time. Let your brain just process just this moment. And you'll be amazing. You'll be amazed to see what like comes to light. You know, for everybody that's going to be different. It's, you know, it's basically the not just the mental benefits of meditation, but the health benefits that happen. And it doesn't have to be sitting in a room, like going, mm, um, you yeah. know, there's resources for guided meditation and there's so many things out there. 
but yeah. I mean, I would say that I hear more sometimes in the silence of my life yeah. than I hear in the active chaos of things, you know, yeah. you know, I'm hearing physically in the active chaos, hearing voices and words and people. I feel like I hear more when I'm just with Sabria because the thoughts begin to roll. I'm writing down what I'm thinking. I might not understand it all the time, but when I go back to look at it, then I start to pull the puzzle pieces together of what's in my head. And I'm telling you, we don't realize how powerful we are inside. We really don't because we've allowed the world to weaken that part of us and, and to hear that part of us because we have so much wisdom inside that we don't even know that exists. Sure. So, and that and that's what I'm hoping to help people, you know, capitalize on. You know, you are your biggest asset, your life, you and you know, and that's where we that's where we, we're missing as a, a society. So you know, you just amaze me because you are just like a ball of energy. So <laughs> it really, if we look back at it, it really hasn't been that long of a time that we've all been in quarantine. So like, you know, like March-ish, you know, all this stuff started hitting and we're just hitting May. I mean, I know for some of us, it seems like it's forever, but like I'm thinking about you had this business where you were going to do these retreats, then all of a sudden travel got banned and you took your business flipped it around, started a new model, but then in that you're going to graduate school and you've gotten a bunch of other cert certifications <laughs> during that time. So what are, what are the certifications that you got? Cause I found that, I find that those are fascinating too. Yes. Yes. So I've, I got certified in happiness um, coaching. I've gotten certified in life purpose coaching, um, cognitive behavioral coaching and, and those techniques and whatnot. And also mindfulness coaching. So you know, for me, you know that you're living in passion where you can stare at videos for hours and be enamored and take notes and do the quizzes and you're not being told to do it. You know, I, yeah. I just genuinely wanted to do these things. And I have a couple more that I have lined up that I want to complete over the next few you know, weeks or months. But I mean, I love what I do so much. I, I love taking concepts and, and meshing them together to create exciting and dynamic, impactful activities for people to grow in their lives, personally, emotionally. And so that's what I've been doing. I've been spending the time finding things that capture, you know, I'm really big about, I'm taking action neuro, neuro linguistics programming course as well, where I'm trying wow. to, yes, I love <laughs> the whole concept of helping people reprogram their brains and yes. rewiring. And there's even activities I want people to do to show them to cut those wires of those negative thoughts and associations and retake those wires. So we'll probably do like a yarn activity where I show people how to cut the wire and retie that wire to something else positive. You know, there's so many ways that you can make concepts that can seem complicated. So um, and engaging and so um, life changing and, and thought changing that people will change and want to grow. And yeah. so that I'm very big in, in being unconventional and I'm, I love just doing this type of work. So I'm at, you know, those certifications are my passion. I'm enjoying the journey. And that's what they say. That's one thing I've learned in my happiness coaching. It's not always about, it's really never about the end point. It's yeah. always about the journey. And if you can be happy during the journey, then you're, you're, you're golden. You're golden. I know it's funny because I do think about the fact that there's a lot of people out there that are like, I'm bored, I'm bored. But I'm like, since this, since being quarantined, I've been more busy at home than I would if, if this never happened. And I go, how is, because I've gotten myself involved in 10 bazillion different projects, but you're right. They're projects I enjoy to the point where it's like, sometimes I have to force myself to be sit, sit still and be quiet because I just want to keep going. Like for me, there's not enough hours in the day to get yeah. all the things done that I want to get done. Yeah. So now, yeah. and it's, I, I think it's kind of hereditary. My mom is the same way. She was talking about how she used to think like when she retired, that it was going to be like sitting still and like and relaxing. And she's done the same thing. She's created things for herself to keep her busy. And she said, she's, she's loving life, but she's more busy now than she was when she was working. Yeah. Everybody wants to live with meaning and purpose at the end of the day, no matter who you are, I don't care how rich you are. I don't care your background you have. We all want to live a life of meaning and purpose. That's what it all comes down to. So I think that none of us really want to sit there like we think we do. So if somebody was interested in your retreats, how do they find out information about it? Yes. So you can go to project-passport.com to learn more. You can also visit us on Facebook or Instagram at Project Passport LLC. 
So those are the best ways to reach us, the most active ways to reach us. And, you know, you'll have, we even have this new thing we're doing called um, retreat fit exploration calls. And it's going to allow you to be able to share your experience and share your situation with us so that we can help place you on the retreats and, and activities that we think will fit your needs most. I mean, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to serve and help people find the right fit for their lives and to make their lives better. That's the, that's the whole thing we're looking for is people, right? So yeah. that's what we're doing. Um, we have the free 30 minute mini retreats you can try out. So check our website out as well. And you can find out which ones we're offering. I have one this weekend and, and it filled up like within a day or two because people were so excited about this stress negotiation mini retreat. So I'm really excited to lead that as well. That is awesome. And I'm thinking too, like that's such a great way to like, I guess, like augment when you do get back to the actual physical travel, because there's going to be, you know, people are going to, a lot of times people go on trips and or they do these retreats and they feel wonderful. And then they come back and it's like, okay, now what, you know? So now they, you have all these other things that they can be doing and staying in contact with each other. And, yeah. You know, I want to so take that, the now what out of it. I don't want you to come back saying now I'm ready to do this. Not now what that's the goal. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Is there anything else you want to let us know or say? You know, my favorite quote is, um, it's this phrase where I forgot what it's about, but I have it on my email signature and it says, um, but what if I fall? And the quote says, but darling, what if you fly? And so I want people to know that you can fly. And if you're, if you're not willing to at least flap your wings and jump out the nest like other baby birds do, you'll never know if you can fly. And you know, I, there was a lot of times that I thought my runway was up and I thought my opportunities were gone and they were done, but I've been blessed in so many ways. You know, financially things work out the way they need to because I'm living in a realm of passion. And, you know, sometimes living in that realm of passion doesn't always have a, a perfect um, equation of how it works out, but it does. So fly, baby, fly. That's all I got to say. Oh, that is awesome. I got chills and tears going at the same time. That was so beautiful. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sabria. Today's episode was brought to you by the Pelvic Floor Store, your source for personal health. You can find us at www.pelvicfloorstore.com. For more information on today's episode and women's wellness, please go to drbetsygreenleaf.com.